Hello, I'm Kyle Bratch, I'm Shopper Motorsports, and today I want to introduce you to a brand new helmet from Bell Helmets. This is the Bruiser helmet, and if it looks similar, you kind of wouldn't be mistaken. It kind of looks like the Bell Rogue helmet on steroids, or maybe the Scorpion Covert helmet. But basically what we have here is a helmet that can either be DOT and ECE rated as a full face helmet, a complete full face helmet, or we flip tube tabs and pull the whole chin bar off here, and it turns into a DOT and ECE rated three quarter face helmet. That's right. The difference between this helmet and say the Rogue helmet is the fact that the face section of that Rogue helmet really does absolutely nothing for you. And it's a half helmet, not a three quarter helmet. So Bell listened to some of the feedback from the people that really liked the Rogue styling, but wanted something that was gonna be even more protective and a little bit more secure, if you will. And boom, here we have it. The Bruiser helmet from Bell Helmets. Now we're gonna give you a detailed breakdown as we walk through all of the features and functions of this particular helmet. I'm gonna start with a 360 degree view here. Again, this is our sample helmet. We haven't gotten our full shipment of these as of yet. From what I've been told, it's gonna to ship with both a smoked shield or a dark shield and a clear shield. I'm gonna show you exactly how that gets swapped out here in just a second. Now please don't quote me on the smoke and the clear. It will definitely have a clear on it in the box when you do receive it. Now when it comes to shield, there are three different versions currently. There's the clear, there's a dark smoke, and the third's gonna be a silver iridium shield, or basically a silver mirror shield. Now before we dig into the details, moving front to back and then outside to inside of this helmet, let's talk a little bit about the shell itself. Again, we talked about how this is DOT and ECE rated. It is a polycarbonate ABS shell construction. That basically means there are multiple components that go into the shell, but as a general rule, it is a plastic type shell. Now that's gonna allow this helmet to not only maintain safety, but it's also gonna mean it's gonna be lightweight. The large helmet we had on the scale downstairs and it was just at three pounds. The medium helmet was at 2.98 pounds. So for right around that three pound mark, you're getting either a full face or a three quarter helmet. Now let's move to the front of the helmet and look at venting. Now the venting on this helmet I thought was really interesting when I started to take a look at it. We have a nice front vent right here that allows nice airflow right into the chin bar. Now in addition to the main vent up here in the front that is open and closable, if you take a look at the whisker vents that are just to the side here on the helmet, these are 100% open all the time. There's no way to close them. So even if you're in inclement weather, you're gonna get some water that's gonna be going into those two vents. Interesting development from Bell. I don't know exactly why they did that, but you just need to know that that is the way it is. Now moving up to the top, we have a nice single action vent up here on the top, so you can have it either open or you can have it closed. Very easy to function with the gloved hand. Now this button or switch or lever is actually recessed below these two ridges here, which are the vent intakes. So you can't just slide your hand over the top. That's not gonna open and close the vent. You actually need to take your fingers and kind of pinch it and then pull it in order to open or close it. Now a very, very interesting thing that I did notice on this helmet is the fact that we have no exhaust vents not at the top nor at the bottom. So you're gonna get wind coming into the front of the helmet. It's kinda of gonna be pressurized in there and probably find its way out through the bottom of the helmet because there is not an exhaust vent on this particular model. So Bell, if you're listening, that's probably something we want in a future generation of this helmet is to give us some exhaust vents. Now again, this is a pre-production sample. So the final version might be a little bit different. And uh, if it does have exhaust vents, Bell, way to go. Now, when we get to the inside of the helmet, you're gonna see huge channels that Bell has put into the top of this helmet. That's gonna be great for heat mitigation. That heat's gonna rise up into those channels, but I was really shocked to see that there wasn't a way for that warm air to be expelled out the back of the helmet. Now, when it comes to the shield itself, we have an open and closed system on either side. You can use a single hand on either side, but it actually functions a lot better if you use two hands. Kind of an interesting setup that we're seeing here from Bell. I've never really seen a two-handed uh, visor open and close before, but it does function a lot easier if you use two hands. Now, the one thing that sets this helmet apart from most any other helmet out there on the market currently is the fact that this is a convertible helmet. If we rotate this helmet up, we're gonna see two gray tabs here at the bottom. We simply pull the gray tab forward, and then this chin bar is completely removable. That's gonna give you a great looking three quarter helmet if that's something you're into. 
So this is a great helmet for the guys that go to rallies or things of that nature where they want full protection when they're driving down the interstate or through the backcountry roads. But when they get into town and they're just cruising around, checking other people's bikes out and things of that nature, they can remove the full face and have just a three quarter face helmet so they still have protection all the way around their head except for their precious face. Now looking at the chin bar itself, we have an ABS plastic here on the inside. You can see those two large vents here on either side. And then of course, the functioning vent here in the center. Again, it's a nice robust piece of plastic that's gonna be able to easily slide into the front of this helmet, converting it from three quarter face to a full face. Now the installation of the chin bar is just as easy as the removal. You're simply gonna take these two tabs here, set them into place on either side of the helmet and give it a good push and it just slides really easily into place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the chin bar once again so we can look at some of the internal details of this helmet. The first thing we're gonna notice is the chin strap is actually a ratchet strap, something that Bell doesn't do very often, but it is a metal on metal ratchet strap. It's gonna be great for an easy open and an easy closure. Now the next thing we'll take a look at is the face shield itself. Very easy to remove the face shield. You're gonna go ahead and pull it all the way down. And then once it releases itself from the top of the helmet here, we just pull it forward and it pulls out. And then the reinstallation is just as easy. We have two little pitchforks over here on each side. We're just gonna set that in place and give it a nice push. And that's all it takes in order to get the shield on and off of this helmet. Now moving on to the interior, we have two cheek pads, one on each side, as we do with all helmets. It's gonna be a combination of snaps, two snaps in the front, and then two pieces of Velcro, one at the top and one at the bottom. So we're gonna have the two snaps, one here at the front and one here at the bottom, and then our two pieces of Velcro. Again, these cheek pads are very minimalistic, if you will. Now moving up to the comfort liner, we're gonna have a slip system here in the back and two snaps here at the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the two snaps first, one and two. Then I'm gonna pull the comfort liner out of the helmet. Oh, two more snaps that I didn't see earlier. One on each side of the helmet. And then moving up to the neck roll right here, we're gonna have a full solid plastic piece that's gonna pull out one from each side, and then a pretty decent tug right here in the center. So probably the most interesting thing that I noticed about the EPS liner is we have these really large channels. We have six vent holes here in the front. That, that makes sense because that's where our intake vents are at. We then have six holes drilled into the EPS liner there towards the rear. Now there is not an exhaust vent per se back there, but um, those holes do allow air to be moving inside the shell, even though there isn't a dedicated exhaust vent. Now, while looking at the inside of this helmet, we do notice that there are no specific speaker pockets, if you will. You can see that the cheek pads have a nice area around them. Um, so you could definitely stick a speaker into this area, but there is not a dedicated pocket for speakers from an intercom system. That being said, this helmet is accessible or you can add an intercom to this particular helmet. It's just gonna be a little bit interesting when it comes to wiring that system up and finding the perfect spot for the speakers. Something that Bell typically does is they typically have a special little pocket in here that you can slide a speaker into. The cheek pads here on this particular helmet do not have that feature as well. Now I suppose the last thing to take a look at is the actual chin strap itself. We talked about how it is a metallic ratchet type system, but what we didn't talk about earlier was the padded chin strap here. So when you do have this in its closed position, you're gonna have a nice chin strap padding that is sewn onto the strap itself, so you're not gonna be losing it. Well, that's about all we have for the features and benefits of the inside of this Bell Bruiser helmet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this helmet on. Now I need you to know that I typically wear a size small helmet. I'm a 55 and a half centimeter measurement, and there are small helmets between 55 and 56 centimeters. This here is our sample helmet and it is a size large, so it is gonna fit a little bit larger than I would typically wear. Now slipping the helmet on, I'm gonna first do it in the full face format here. Go ahead and secure the chin strap. Now I'm gonna say that the chin strap on this is a little further back than some of the other bell helmets that I've worn. 
I'm getting a little bit of pressure here on my Adam's apple. Typically that strap sits a little bit further, farther forward. Take my glasses and slide them into place. Now the initial push past the uh, padding right there is a little bit tight, but once your glasses are in there, there is a nice fitment here. Go ahead and open and close the shield here. Again, the open and close on this with a single, single hand is doable, but it's a little bit sticky, if you will. In order to get a really good open and close, it's really better to use two hands. I'm going to go ahead and get this guy closed and give you a 360 degree view of what this helmet looks like in its current setup. Now I'll be giving you the 360 degree of what this looks like in the full face setup. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my two gray tabs down here at the bottom. I'm gonna pull those back and the whole chin bar is going to slide right off. Again, nice ABS plastic here on the back. We have the two vents that don't close and the one that does. This here is gonna be the three quarter view. You're gonna notice that the helmet's gonna come all the way down in the back as a normal full face helmet would. Nice protection over the ear here, and the one place that you're going to be unprotected is going to be in your face. Now that we've given you the 360 degree of what this looks like in the three-quarter position, go ahead and drop that face shield down so you can see what that looks like. We have great coverage, comes down just to the bottom of my nose here. It's going to get great wind protection here if you're riding in the three-quarter setup. Again, it's really, really simple to go ahead and slide your, your chin bar back into place. I have not tried this while wearing the helmet. It'll probably take a little bit to get used to. There it is. There it is. Without taking the helmet off, you can get the chin bar on and off. Again, it's a very simple setup for this Bruiser helmet from Bell Helmets. And there you have it. That there is the detailed breakdown of the Bruiser helmet from Bell Helmets. Brand new helmet for 2020, just released January 15th of this year. If you're looking for a convertible helmet, if you will, this is one you might want to take a look at. If you like what you saw today, please give it a thumbs up. If you want more action like this coming directly to your inbox, please hit that subscribe button and more importantly, the notification bell. Until next time, and as always, take care and ride safe out there.